black male ASMR her. And as you can tell by the title of this video, I crashed my motorcycle. Yup. And I'm not very happy about that. But um, the crash happened this past Saturday, January 23rd, 2021. Okay. And it was a crazy, I'll explain everything. It was a, a crazy experience. <laughs> so anyway, um, like every couple of Saturdays I go down, there's a city named House Springs in the state of Missouri. And they're about, it's about 45 minutes south west of where I live. Okay, so I was in House Springs and I teach this 11 year old girl and a 13 year old girl. I teach them how to play guitar. Okay, I've been teaching them for since last year. Um, but I go down there uh, every Saturday, every, every two Saturdays. So I just finished teaching them and I was leaving. And House Springs. It's a very rural area, okay, so the place where they live in, there are no uh, street lights or anything, and it's a bunch of windy roads, okay, so I was leaving at 7 at night, and it was pitch black outside, but anyway, uh, the speed limit was 30. Okay, so I normally go 35 on the straights and slow down to 30 to go around a turn. So I was on a turn, a left turn, leaning my bike. And then I was only going 30 miles per hour. And then all of a sudden, that rear tire just slipped out like that in a split second. And the next thing I know, the bike was in, uh, in front of me on the ground, like spinning around and sliding. And I was sliding right behind it. Yeah, and we both slid for like uh, maybe five seconds. It seemed a lot longer though. Yeah, but I was sliding. But <clears throat> uh, anyway, when I fell, my left leg, it just smacked against the, the asphalt and then the inertia of my movement forced my upper body to get in front and I was like on my stomach just sliding, sliding, sliding. And I probably rolled over too, I don't know, because it was, it was pitch black out there. I couldn't see anything. Uh, I just know I was sliding and I couldn't stop. Then after about five seconds, the bike like, it crashed into a ditch and I crashed right behind it. And I didn't hit the bike though. I, I stopped maybe about a foot from the bike. Okay, so <clears throat> I was there and I was like, this didn't just happen. It, this, I must be sleeping, I must be dreaming, but no, it was real. So I was in the ditch and I didn't know what to do. Uh, and I couldn't call the police because I'm not very familiar with that area, so I couldn't call them like, hey, just come to this area right here and, you know, I'll be there. So I didn't know what street I was on. I was just out in pitch black. And then, um, coincidentally, about five minutes after I crashed, another, um, motorcyclist, he was riding a Harley Davidson. He passed by, he saw me and he slowed down, but it was just a really tight uh, street. So he slowed down and he's like, he, he knew I was, he knew what it was cause he saw my helmet. I was still, still have my helmet on. So he went down the street further, made a U-turn and came back. He's like, you need help? I was like, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he parked his bike and I crashed, it was a ditch, but it was a lady's house. Some ladies, I don't know her, <clears throat> but the guy, he uh, 
of his bike and we picked my bike up and he said, you know what, uh, I live about six minutes away from her. He said, if you want, I can just go home and get my trailer and come back and we can tow your bike. And I said, well, I live in St. Louis. And then he said, well, I work in St. Louis. I just left for work. Uh, and coincidentally, again, he works like a couple of minutes from my house. He said, I'm familiar with the area over there, so I can just tell you up there for free. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. So anyway, while he was talking to me, uh, like I said, I crashed in front of a house. Some old lady came out, okay? Uh, looked like she's about 80 years old, I don't know. She was like, I heard some ruckus out here. Uh, Y'all okay? And I said, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I crashed my motorcycle in front of your house. And she said, you're okay? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, you need the police? I said, no, I don't think so. So anyway, uh, she went back inside. And then I called my, well, I said, I teach those little girls guitar. So I called their father. I said, hey, I just had an accident. Uh, he said, we'll be there. So he and his wife, they came and they got there. I said, yeah, some guy's going to, uh, oh no! Yeah, they said they're gonna come. So while they're on their way, the old lady came out again with a, and there was an old man with her. So what happened is that the old lady, she called her neighbor, some old man. So they're both like they're in their eighties. So they came out, and then the lady said, "You need any help?" And I said, "Well," and she had a flashlight this time. I said, can you shine a flashlight on my left leg? So she shined it on her. I looked and I saw I was injured. Okay. Uh, so uh, she went back inside and brought a big old Band-Aid out with some Neosporin. Yeah, so that, that helped. So I put that on her and she went back inside after that. And the old man, he said, I'll wait out here with you. And he was freezing. It was like 35 degrees outside, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. How much is that in Celsius? I don't know. Uh, so, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I know some of y'all don't live in America. 35. Mm -mm. Fahrenheit. To see. Okay, it's like. 1.7 degrees Celsius. Okay. <clears throat> so, he was out there freezing and he just kept me company and he said he wanted to make sure I was safe because I didn't know who that motorcycle Harley Davidson guy was. We didn't know if he was going to show back up. So, while we were waiting, uh, the two little girls, father and mother, came and you know, and we all just waited to see if that guy would show up with the trailer. And about 15 minutes later, he showed up, but without a trailer. He had a van, uh, like one of those old school, big old luxury vans. And I was like, how are we gonna get that in there? And he pulled up, he said, well, I couldn't get my trailer, but my van has a has wheelchair lift, because his sister like can't walk, she's paralyzed. So he had a wheelchair lift. So we put the bike on the wheelchair lift and put it inside the van. <laughs> it was crazy. And he's like, man, your bike is so light. I was like, it is? And I said, it weighs 440 pounds. And he told me his bike weighed like 790 pounds. And that just about gave me a heart attack. But anyway, uh, I took pictures. I want to show y'all. So... Okay, um, and I could edit these pictures into the video, but I just, I don't feel like it, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'll take, so her, here we go. So, 
sorry. This is the back of the bike, well, the right side, and the tail is hanging. That's where the license plate goes. I hope y'all can see this. Um, license plate right there is bent like crazy. Um, the clutch lever broke completely off. Okay. Oh, and this part, this front part broke. Uh, side fairings, all the left side fairings broke. The gas tank, let me see if I can get a, I think I took a picture of the gas tank. Oh yeah, see here's the front right here. That's broken, so that's gonna have to be replaced. The gas tank is majorly dented. I'm glad that didn't, Puncture though, because without a puncture, it would have probably started a fire. Yeah. Oh, this is not a clear picture, but this is we when we got it on the van or inside the van. <laughs> and it was it was the little it was a tight squeeze. We had to like get it in there, and then uh, like we had to get it in there this way, and then rotate it and then kind of force it in so it could fit and took off four of us we could have gotten it done with two of us but it was a lot easier with four and it was difficult for me because my left leg was in pain <clears throat> so now I was smart because I wore my motorcycle Equipment, okay, the motorcycle protection, protective equipment. But I want to show y'all my injury though. It's not too bad, so don't worry. But um, it's my left leg. <sighs> so right here. So my bike fell over to the left. I slammed this into the street, okay? And it was all puffy for a couple of days. It went back down now. And then when I started sliding, her. Ah, this happened, okay? And the small, see I have a little, ah, dang, I hope y'all can see this. There. I have a dime. Okay, it's the smallest currency that we have, but look, it's, it's not that big. Uh, so, oh, and I can finally bend my leg all the way. At first, it was difficult for me to bend it, but I can bend it now. I got my clothes that I was wearing. I actually just took this out the trash, so I threw them away, but I wanted to show y'all. Like just the pants that I had in the trash. Right here. So my left leg. That hole. That's what happened. My right leg didn't even touch the ground. It's like it's no scratch or well, nah, nothing. So it's just my left leg. Now, I was wearing, here's my jacket, hold on. Oh man. I actually wore this in a video a long time ago. What video? I think it was the Ignoring You video, I don't know. But yeah, so this is the right side, it's all dusty, and it, let me see. can't really see it but this was scraping on the ground uh it was the left side okay I left it I was gonna clean it but I wanted y'all to see uh man it's so dark in here but if it was brighter you could see like this got it's all scratched up especially on the arms 
Like, anyway, if I wouldn't have been wearing this, my arms would have been torn apart. I'm telling y'all. So I'm very, very happy. I wore my motorcycle. A jacket. This thing is heavy. Hold on. Okay. My gloves. I'm sorry. Like, my batteries decided to die while I was recording. God, stupid thing. It said my batteries were full when I first started. Anyway, I have the gloves right here. Okay? Now, I'm very angry about this because I just uh, bought these about a month ago. And I paid $200 for these. And that's because I rod all year long. Okay, it doesn't matter what the temperature is. And my hands would be freezing like crazy. Uh, yeah, so, and it was anyway, 35 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, which is 1.7 degrees Celsius at that time where I crashed. But these are heated gloves, okay? So, you know, you turn them on with this. I have the batteries not plugged up right now. So these are heated gloves, but as you can see, look at this. Like, my hand scraped. It was just scraping on that street right there. A little bit right there. And then right here, finger. Right there. So, my hand, this is my left one. My right one got hit too. Look at that. There. There. Right there. <clears throat> oh, and the left one, it's great right here too. Yeah, my hands would have been torn apart. I wouldn't have been wearing my gloves. Yes, I'm very, very happy that I have my proper motorcycle equipment on. Um, and those pants, I have about, I had 12 pairs of these pants. Like, trust me, I always wear the same stuff. <clears throat> That's how it looks like I'm wearing the same clothes all the time. I'm not, I got, I got a bunch of these shirts and a bunch of these pants. So, um, What was I saying? Oh, my shoe. So, uh, I'm not wearing them. But my um, my other pair of shoes, they are like a suede kind of material. And the left one is kind of like scuffed up right here, but it didn't penetrate because it was thick. Okay. Oh man, this stupid chair is so squeaky, I hit it. Okay. Yeah, so. Anyway, so my bike, uh. Oh! About the tow. So, I was gonna get it towed with, uh, by a motorcycle, other motorcyclist, to my house. <clears throat> but then I realized that. The garage I stay in, or the garage I park my motorcycle in, they don't allow, like, trash the vehicles in there, you know. So, I was like, man, I can't bring it there. So, the family that I know over there in House Springs, they said, well, you can just leave it at our garage. Okay, so the, we put my motorcycle in that guy's van, and... I rode with my friends and the guy followed us to my friend's house and we took the motorcycle off or out of van and put it in the garage. Okay. And then my friend, <clears throat> well, the girl's father, uh, he drove me home. Okay. 
But yeah, but I don't know, it was just a crazy night. So my bike is gonna be told that I called the dealership, they'll tow the bike for me on Friday. Um, I called in the insurance company Monday. I'm still waiting for them to contact me back. It's been two days. Jeez. Well, this is the first time I've had a motorcycle accident, so I don't know how it works with motor uh, motorcycle insurance. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that bike, there's about probably $8,000 worth of damage done to it. And luckily, my deductible was only $500. Um, and I hope they can fix it. I don't want it. I don't want it to be totaled. Because uh, there might be some internal damage that I don't know about. So I don't know. So anyway, I'll just assume that they'll fix it. So once they fix it, I'll get back on and start riding. I'm not going to stop. This accident's not going to stop me. And I know some of my family members don't want me to ride because they says dangerous and yeah that's kind of the point you know like um and I, I knew that from the very beginning when i started riding and that's one of the things that draws me to it okay that danger knowing that something can happen and there's no really good way of I mean, you can't, like, get on the motorcycle and put a seatbelt on, you know, or have an airbag in front of you. You can wear an airbag vest, but, yeah, but what I'll do, though, when my bike is fixed, I'll invest in some motorcycle pants so I won't be, you know, walking around with a holy leg anymore. Yeah. But they're so expensive. I don't care, it's worth it though, because I don't want to be walking around the holy leg and a uh, messed up leg. And all this happened at 30 miles per hour, okay? So if I'd have been going like 60 or more, it would have been crazy. And another thing, I didn't hit my head. My helmet is just fine. I didn't, my head didn't touch the ground at all. So that was strange. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll keep riding though because people tell me that's not safe. And like I said, I know that, but I am the one who has to live with the decisions that I make. I am the one. So it doesn't matter what other people say or what they think or how they feel or anything. I'm the one who has to live with, uh, with these decisions. So I understand the risk, and I'm willing to take it because of that freedom that you feel while riding, and that excitement, and that adrenaline, and that power. <laughs> so yeah, I'll keep riding. Okay, this video ended up being a lot longer than I expected it to be. So I'll go now and try to get something to eat. Okay. And remember Godspeed on the devil's thunder. Okay. Bye. Oh, and always wear your safety equipment. Okay. Don't be trying to act cute on a motorcycle. Wear your equipment. <laughs>